Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot and welcome to Maker Quest. In this episode, we're going to learn about impact force. Because last week I broke my ankle in a climbing accident, so I thought I would take the opportunity uh, to uh, share how we can learn about impact force and basically how we can make our collisions safer. So this is super useful in various sports like rock climbing, parkour, and gymnastics. And it's really helpful for design, especially if you're dealing with high force collisions like in cars and things like that. So how can we use physics to figure out what forces we're dealing with and how can we make our collisions safer? So first of all, what is impact force? Well, it's defined as the total net energy going into the collision divided by the impact distance of the collision. And impact distance is basically the deflection of the other object. So for example, if you're jumping on a bar, it would be the amount of bend that you put into the bar. Or if you have a car crash, it would be the actual amount of crunch that is in the car. So impact distance is pretty easy to measure. You can just uh, do that through observation. If it's a crunch, you can measure the amount of crunch that happened. Um, or if you're doing like jumping onto a bar or something, you can take a video and then measure it um, after that. So then uh, now we need to figure out the amount of energy going into the collision. And so that's really going to depend on what type of situation you're talking about. So let's take my fall as an example. I was about 15 feet high, and since I like SI units I'm, and nice round numbers, I'm going to just assume that that is about 5 meters. So 5 meters high, and I was climbing up, and I was pretty stationary. So let's assume that all of my energy is due to gravitational potential energy, which is basically just due to the amount of height that I am at at that point. So the gravitational potential energy is defined as uh, the mass of the object, so that would be me, let's assume I'm about 60 kilograms, times the gravitational acceleration. Uh, I'm gonna use 10 meters per second squared because I like round numbers to make the calculations easier in my head, and uh, times the height. So in this case, five meters. So in that instance, my total potential energy would be 3,000 joules. So okay, I know my potential energy in that situation. What happens when I actually hit the ground? Well, at that point, all of my potential energy has been converted into kinetic energy, and there's no gravitational potential since I'm at the ground. And since energy is conserved, I know that all of that potential has to have gone into the kinetic. So my kinetic energy must equal the potential energy that I started with. So that means that my total net energy going into the collision, which is kinetic, is 3,000 joules. All right, cool. So now let's assume that the mat uh, deflected about two inches, and uh, let's convert that into SI units because I like them a little more than American units. Uh, so that would be about 0 0.05 meters, or like five centimeters. So then my impact force would be 3,000 joules, divided by the impact distance, or 0 0.05 meters, to give me an impact force of about 60,000 newtons. So that's pretty big. Um, and unfortunately, when I landed, all of that went into my left ankle. Um, but I could have mitigated the collision by allowing more of my body to take the impact, like if I landed on both of my feet, or if I had fallen back onto my bottom. That would have been way better. All right, so now that we understand how to calculate impact force and figure out energy and stuff, let's do a really awesome, fun uh, <laughs> demonstration to show what we've learned. So I'm going to use an egg drop as an example. So I have these eggs here, and I'm going to put my little uh, <laughs> ruler tied to a bottle to keep it upright to make sure that my uh, height stays the same. So I'm going to drop it at about 10 inches. Smash! Awesome. So, pretty crunched. Now, using this piece of foam, I am increasing the impact distance, which should reduce the amount of force on the egg. And hopefully it won't break, so let's see. Yay! It didn't break! Woohoo! <laughs> okay, so basically what this is doing is increasing the impact distance, so by that amount of distance which is enough to protect the egg and reduce the impact force. So awesome. All right, so uh, I'll leave you with a question, and that question is, why does increasing the impact distance decrease the impact force? So it's a little bit of a tricky question, but think about how the energy is getting distributed. 
If you have an answer, please let me know in the comments below. And to answer last week's question, I asked, what, uh, why do you need to use a battery in the portable solar USB charger? Why can't you just use the solar panel? Well, technically, if you have a sufficiently high power solar panel to charge your phone, then totally fine, that works. But the tricky part that you might have guessed is that the sun only shines at certain times of the day. And if you live in a place like Seattle, it doesn't shine all year round. So the best way to use a solar panel is with a battery to ensure that you can power your device whenever you need to. So whether it's at night or on a rainy day, or if you happen to just be in a basement all day with no access to the sunlight. Um, the panel will charge the battery when there is sun, and then the battery will provide power to your device whenever you need it. So that's pretty much it. All right, please let me know if you have any questions about that explanation or about impact force and egg drops or how to not break your ankle. <laughs> Thank you for watching and please subscribe.